Hey guys, Crux here with SinShop. So today on the Project Nomad series, we're going to be taking a look at the motor controller for the electric wheelchair that we used on a robot base. My hopes are to be able to figure out enough about how the motor controller works so we can control it directly. So let's open this up and we'll take a look and see what we find out. So here's our motor controller. It's made by Invicare, which is the manufacturer of the uh, Electron, the electric wheelchair. Uh, it's a uh, made in New Zealand uh, partner with DK PMA 02 uh, Mark 5. So the connectors on here there's the connector for the joystick, charger, uh, motor 1, motor 2, and then the 24 volts DC input from the batteries. So open this up. So, nothing special to note of the underside of the board. I have some pretty decent sized copper traces there. So that's most likely to run the motors. This is just a massive heatsink. It's just a cast aluminum block. And then here's our motor controller. So here's the board. Uh, over here we have the uh, main microcontroller. Um, brand name is HHS. Um, I'm not sure the manufacturer of that. Um, I don't really care because I'm not going to use the microcontroller. Uh, here we clearly see two bri H bridges. There's uh, two sets of four MOSFETs. Big relay made by Tyco. Um, that we hear clicking on and off whenever uh, we start the drive uh, motors. So that's a protection circuit that basically cuts power to the system unless you're you know, actively using it. Uh, there's a couple uh, current sensors there. Uh, there's the circuitry that's basically the input from the joystick. Uh, the joystick actually has a similar thing where they basically, you know, hot glued or put rubber cement down on, on whatever that part is there. Uh, and then over here we have our uh, drivers for the H-Bridge. So they're a uh, uh, half-bridge motor controller. Um, so two of those control uh, each uh, of the H-Bridges. So the idea is to tap into these, um, sever the ties to the microcontroller, and then we can uh, control the H-bridge directly. So the other uh, question is, what exactly are these? So I'm going to try to pry one up gently and attempt to read what it says. It is a uh, IRF2305. So yeah, the, the specs on that is a, uh, it's a international rectifier IRF3205 uh, power MOSFET and channel. So it can handle uh, 110 amps at 25 degrees centigrade 
and at 100 degrees centigrade it can handle 80 amps. So that's quite a bit of power. Uh, we looked at the uh, batteries and there's a uh, hard fuse for 80 amps and the uh, uh, connectors for the battery are rated for 50 amps each. So we're guessing that we're not going to see more than 25 amps uh, per the uh, each motor. So these are probably just overrated just because there's no cooling fan and then you know that's operated out outdoors and they want to make sure that they don't fail. So they'll work well for us because you know the last thing we want is for the uh, H bridge to die on us. So I'm looking at the uh, options for setting up a connector and I was initially thinking a uh, 10 pin header like this would work fine since I need two pins for each of the uh, um, H-bridge dr driver chips and then uh, power and ground. However, I forgot about the relay which is also going to need to be engaged so opted for the 15 pin connector. Um, I also, instead of putting it right here at the top, I'm going to put it here where there's a bit more space and uh, it doesn't contend with other things on the board. So the connector will sit about there and there's plenty of space clear of everything. That also allows me for a longer lead so if I have to take it apart it's easier to do and not break wires. So check this out. I'm pretty proud of this. Uh, my first use of a mill. Uh, the problem was that this aluminum was fairly thick. Um, I mean you can tell just by how deep I had to mill in and then what's left of the material there. Uh, slightly closer shot there. But uh, the problem is that if with the hole mounted there without the material milled out it would sit about that height which you wouldn't be able to plug anything in. So I used her mill and milled out the extra material and so that fits nice and flush to the surface and it will work out nicely. So I just have to drill a couple holes and I'll be all set. Um, not the cleanest finish on the surface there on the sides but considering it's the first time I've actually ever used the mill for something other than here let's cut this slot in this piece of metal for no apparent reason other than to say I've used a mill before. Uh, I consider it pretty good and it'll do the job nicely and it's on the inside so I didn't have to look pretty. So. Awesome.